Number two, because it affects our balance sheet. Whether it's a three trillion or a seven trillion balance sheet, it is affected by climate change. Climate change affects inflation, and inflation is the beast that all central bankers, whether they wear a green jacket or not, want to tame and discipline. Number two, because it affects our balance sheet. Whether it's a three trillion or a seven trillion balance sheet, it is affected by climate change. President of European Central Bank claims inflation is due to climate change. In a statement that could have been plucked straight from a satirical comedy sketch, Christine Lagarde, president of the European Central Bank, ECB, has made the audacious claim that climate change is to blame for inflation. On June 22, 23, 2023, France hosted an international summit for a new global financing pact, which was attended by world leaders, including president of ECB Christine Lagarde. One of the agenda is to build a new contract between the countries of the North and the South to address climate change and the global crisis. Lagarde, with a straight face, declared, Climate change affects inflation, and inflation is the beast that all central bankers, whether they wear a green jacket or not, want to tame and discipline. Number two, because it affects our balance sheets, whether it's a three trillion or a seven trillion balance sheets, it is affected by climate change. This is a transcript by Christine Lagarde at the summit for a new global financing pact in Paris. Today, the window of opportunity to achieve this goal is closing before our eyes. The past eight years have been the warmest on record worldwide, and the critical 1.5 C threshold for annual temperatures will likely be exceeded in at least one year before 2027. Record-breaking droughts, heat waves, and floods are already plaguing the world. They are inflicting suffering and damage on every continent and serve as a mere glimpse into the future. It is everyone's duty to take every possible step to ensure that the Paris climate goal is reached. Not only is this a matter of justice for future generations, it is also undoubtedly a matter of justice and responsibility for today's. Developing nations are already the hardest hit by the impact of global warming. One fact is glaringly evident. Developing countries are poised to bear a disproportionate share of the impact. More than 90% of those who have perished owing to extreme weather events during the last half century lived in these countries, where more than 70% of reported disasters occurred. The path forward is clear. We must forge ahead with a global transition to ensure our economies are future-proof. This means not only reducing greenhouse gas emissions to net zero and adapting our economies to shield them from climate change, but also tackling the root causes of the severe destruction of nature that is threatening the vital resources we rely on for our survival. ECB research shows that in Europe alone, over 70% of our economy is highly dependent on nature's ecosystem services a figure that is likely to be much higher in developing economies. In taking up this challenge, there are at least three levers we can use to boost the funding needed for a green and just transition on a global scale. First and foremost, it is up to governments to lead the fight against climate change and honor their commitments to financing the transition. Developed economies must lead by example and honor the USD 100 billion climate pledge made 14 years ago at COP15 in Copenhagen. Governments should also mobilize private finance by implementing transition policies and creating a sound and stable framework to attract capital flows at the national and global level. Second, governments can push for reform of the multilateral financial architecture. The Network for Greening The financial system, which brings together 127 central banks and supervisors from all around the world, has played a crucial role in accelerating global action and will continue to do so. We at the ECB have also made it a priority to take account of climate change because I, it affects inflation, two, it affects our balance sheet, and three, it is a financial risk for the banks we supervise. We have adjusted our corporate bond holdings and changed our collateral and risk management to better reflect climate risks and at the same time provide incentives to support the green transition of the economy. As supervisors, we make sure that banks consider climate risks when making business and lending decisions. We also stress test the impact of climate change on the economy and financial stability. Through our advice, analysis, and actions, we aim to manage the financial risks stemming from climate change.
as well as provide evidence to support the need for the transition I just mentioned. It seems that the only constant is change, whether in climate or in central bankers' reasoning. Remember, next time the cost of your grocery bill goes up, don't blame it on economic factors. No, it must be the weather.